Hello and welcome to Game Guru Max live broadcast number 56, I think. And welcome everyone to a little bit of a sneak peek into the internal development of Game Guru Max. The format of our little show is really simple. Anyone who's lucky enough to be in the live chat can answer, sorry, ask some questions. And about halfway through, towarding the end, I get to answer a few of them. The ones I don't get to answer, I will post as text answers on the Game Guru forums along with a recording of this broadcast. So please do ask your questions if you have any. Please stick a question mark at the end so I can quickly scroll through the live chat. So I also want to find out if everyone can hear me, otherwise that intro will have to be done twice. Um, Synchro62 says, we can hear. Thank you very much, that's great. Now we can move on to the things I want to show you. And they are numerous. Well, there are three things, actually, that I'd like to show you today. But I just want to let you know that this Friday's build is more of a bug fixing build. Over the weeks, we've been interested in releasing lots of new stuff, lots of assets, lots of features. Um, and I wouldn't say we've neglected, but we've certainly been postponing the big collection of bugs and tweaks and issues that also need to be done in the software. And so this Friday's build is about that. But also I get to show some cool stuff along the way because it's kind of related. So I want to show some stuff, some improvements, some slightly new things. So let's get straight in and show you the first one, which is we have introduced um, texture atlas animation, or what you used to call the decal system, because we didn't have it up until today, and now we do. So if I just show you something that was raised last week, this was our candle. This is a smart object, and I won't go all through the bit about how to make smart objects, see previous broadcasts for that. Suffice it to say, this object consists of a mesh, it's a light as well, it's also a particle effect. But the, the, the criticism was that that doesn't really look like a candle <laughs> You can do better than that. Well, we did. We went back to the grindstone and we got this one. Dink. And this one, instead of this sort of strange particle flame thing, is an actual flickering uh, flame that you would expect on a candle. Still a smart object, but now it actually, instead of using the particle effect, it uses a decal effect as well. For those who don't know a decal, otherwise called billboards, is basically a flat um, plane on which is rendered an animating texture that then follows you around the room. No matter which direction you look at the plane, it will always face you, so it always looks like the animating thing that you want. So that's actually been recorded from a real candle, then cut up and then placed to create the animation. So that's actually a real candle flame. <laughs> it's not simulated, but the, the benefit is that it can now be part of smart objects or you can place them individually. And the other thing that was a little bit critique was raised was our campfire. So if I go to camp and show you this one, this is what we had before. This is our old campfire. Again, same kind of uh, uh, good critique. Not really flames, it's just another kind of particle effect. Now with campfires, a little bit better than the candle in that we can combine both decal animations and particle effects. So if I were to build one from scratch, like I said, I'm not in a smart object, just going to say, there's our starting point. Then we are going to get a uh, decal. So if I fire, where's my fire? So there's a fire. Now we're still working on this. I think we can get better on the scale and how it merges in with the logs and stuff. But don't worry about all that. That's just, I'm giving you a starting point as to how decals can be used. But then once you've got that, you can then select a particle effect which maybe have sparks. So that's a sort of spark effect. So we'll add that to the party. And then we also want some smoke. So we've got some new smoke that we develop in the particle editor, and then we created a new particle from it. So nice big smoke, drop that in as well. And then highlight that whole thing, create a group, and then have another one, and another one. So you can see, obviously a few little tweaks around the flames and stuff, just to get it really nice. But doesn't that look much nicer than this sort of particle effect? Because now you've got the real flames. Again, this was actually recorded 
Um, a fire was created, and then the <laughs> flames recorded. Um, and there's some cleanup around the edges, but yeah, real fire again. And of course, this is where particle effects come into their own in terms of the larger, much more random sparks and smoke and things like that in order to finish the effect. And so now, with that, we can now carry on. We can do things like grenade explosions and large barrel explosions and, and other things that would require that more more detail on the flames and the fire inside. And there could be other things as well. But now, oh, and another little bonus as well. All Game Guru Classic decals are also supported in Max as well. So any old decals that you may want to carry over, they'll work straight out of the box uh, with Game Guru Max. So hopefully you like what you saw. We listened. All, we always listen to the community, but we thought we would bring that suggestion front and center. So you requested it basically. I think it was two weeks ago or a week ago, and we've already implemented the change, and it's now better. So thank you very much for helping us improve Game Guru Max. The second thing I want to show you, which is also pretty cool, and again something that was requested very recently by the community, but. I think has been wanted for, for a long time is let me just create a little scene for you is being able to search for objects so I'm going to put a mountain there I'm going to put two characters here maybe a, a character here and a character here I'm also going to pick barrel you can have one barrel maybe you have four barrels like so now let's say I was over here and I'm thinking Right, I've got this, but I remember placing three more of these characters, but where are they? Well, in the past, you just have to hunt around a massive level looking for them. But now, if you go to Settings and Advanced, you'll see there's a new selection called a low selection of detailed objects list. If you tick that, this icon here, which is normally to sort these, there's a new mode called Detailed Objects List. You select that, it now switches to a pure tree view. Now, that you can probably guess what's going to happen with the tree view. It still lists out the entities that you have, but you can open up, say, for characters, and these are all the instances of that character within the level. So if I select this one, we go to her. Now, the second one is her. The third one is the character with near one barrel. And the fourth one is the character with four barrels. And it doesn't matter how big or complicated your level is, you can narrow down by the object you're interested in, go straight to it. This is super useful if, say, you drop some objects in, then you later want to delete that object. There wasn't really any way of doing it without hunting down every single object. Great if they're big objects, but what if they're keys, or n memos, or notes, or pens? Very tiny things, you'd never find them. No, you just go to the object that you want, and then find the instances that you want to remove or move, and voila, a very nice way to navigate all of the objects in your scene. I'm sure a lot of people <laughs> didn't really expect this to happen, but there it is. This is going to be in Game Guru Max. And the final thing, I'll just highlight this barrel, because remember last week everyone said, oh, I don't like the thickness of that highlighter. Can we have it thinner? And I asked the question, well, how thin, how thick? Maybe people like it like this. So what we decided to do is add an option into the developer tools called thickness. So now what you can actually do, if I just move this to the side a little bit, in fact, if I just move all the way across here, you get a better view. And then guess what's going to happen? I can make this highlight thicker or really thin. I can make it to almost just like, there you go, almost one pixel, barely a pixel of highlight if you wanted it like that. I like it a little bit more about the, but the bottom line is you need to choose the thickness of your highlighter. Obviously, we'll keep playing with that internally until we get a nice um, compromise between a highlight you can see, but not one that's overly thick. And that's the one we'll use for when we release the product. And it's what most people would get out of the box. So those are the three things I wanted to show you today. Um, as I said, there's more stuff on the way. This is basically bug fixing, and that bug fixing will continue and will be part of a tested and ready to rock Friday build that you will get if you're a pre-order user. Now, as is my custom, I am now going to look for some questions. I'm sure there are one or two. Burning a hole in your soul. So I'm going to start at the top, look for a question mark. Still just one page, I guess. I might get away with uh, a broadcast that's no longer than 15 minutes long. 
what's uh, you? The first question, we can hear you, smiley7. I guess that's some emoji that... I, oh, big nose, big pointy nose. <laughs> Thanks very much. Um, okay, great, let's look for some questions. Um, la 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 la, dee 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 dee. What? The whole of Canada, question mark. I'm afraid, yes, there is a lot of Canada. Great option indeed, thank you very much. Here's a question. The only question in the live chat, and then I'm going to uh, end this broadcast. So if you've got any questions, you want to be posting them for Lee gets the crazy idea, we can finish in 15 minutes. Which I must say, in over 50 broadcasts, I haven't managed to do. Because I do like to talk. This is from uh, Chuck Haggle. Question. Does the smart object logic apply to in-game also? If I push around the campfire, smart object using physics, will all the component parts move together in game? Absolutely. <laughs> it wouldn't be much use if smart objects disintegrated on touch. Um, smart objects, think of it like a regular object. Think of it like an artist has created a really nice object with lots of details in it. That's all a smart object is. It's just an object. You can treat it like a regular object and it will work like a reg regular object in the game. There are of course some amazing advantages to smart objects in that each component has its own script. So you'll have say uh, an object that might have a light on it and then a fire coming out of the top of whatever it is. So the fire is using one script in order to do the flickering and then the uh, and then the animation the light is obviously changing its range and its strength and whatever you want to do with a light and that's a second object and then the object itself whether it be a, a character or um, you know a wheeled thing or just a regular static object it also has the ability to have its own logic and then it can do its own thing so the more you, things you can glue together in a smart object the cleverer that object could be if you wanted it to be but certainly, the smart object will obey regular physics if the components of that smart object have the correct physical properties. Um, so yeah, this uh, barrel, if I choose to put, like, say, um, a particle emitter on the barrel, then put the barrel on its side and rolled it down the hill, then you would actually see the particles being emitted in the trail of this rapidly accelerating cylinder rolling down a hill. It's exactly what you would expect in real life, so why wouldn't you expect it when you're creating your game levels? So hopefully that's a fair answer. I really stretched out that answer because with only one question and two minutes to go, <laughs> this is the thing you got to do. Keep the audience entertained. What is the meaning of life? 42. Super easy. Next one. <laughs> Last one. That's it. Okay, so I'm going to answer the rest of your questions because I'm sure you're going to be answering your qu asking your questions right now, but it's kind of too late. I'm looking at the clock. There's two minutes to go. Just want to say thank you very much for listening. Um, we are running a pre-order at 25% discount. If you do want access to the stuff you're looking at today, and then you maybe want to play with them in two days' time on Friday, I release builds every single Friday, so you get to play with what I talk about on Wednesday and that for anyone who's new to the broadcast it's always Wednesday at 4 p.m. G sorry VST for the time being and um, when the rain starts it will be back to GMT so thanks again for this broadcast this is the momentous time where I get to do the broadcast in 15 minutes so Herald broadcast 56 as the first time I managed to do it so sorry it wasn't a longer broadcast but I'm getting some benefit out of the fact this is exactly 15 minutes in length. I'm actually still looking at the clock to make see that 14 turn into 15. So join me again next week when there's going to be a little bit more of what I would call new functionality to talk about. So until next Wednesday, I hope you enjoyed it. Be safe, enjoy the rest of the week, and I'll speak to you all soon. Goodbye.